Joining me now is the top Democrat on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Ben Carlin. Good morning, Senator. I know you support President Trump's proclamation about Jerusalem. You just saw James Longman there talk about the peace process. You saw those demonstrations. How is this good for a peace process? First, Martha, it's good to be with you. As has been pointed out, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. In 1995, Congress enacted a statute that said the same. So I think the announcement itself was not anything that, that is news. But what the president should have done is done it in the right diplomatic way. And there, I think he did not. Uh, it should have been done in a way to advance the peace process for a two-state solution. Instead, the president just made the announcement, did not take advantage uh, of that in regards to the Israelis, and offered the Palestinians very little. I think that was a mistake, the manner in which he did it, but clearly, Jerusalem's the capital of Israel. But he uh, overturned basically decades and decades of U.S. foreign policy. Other presidents have said they want to do that, but he's the only one who has. So now what? Well, I've talked to many of the players in the Middle East. Uh, I think they knew this day was coming. I don't think it was a, a surprise. I think what is the surprise is the manner in which the president did it, that he did not really engage all the players as far as trying to move forward on, on the peace process. Uh, as a country determines its own capital. Israel determined that Jerusalem is its capital. It's where their government facilities are located. It is the facts. It's the facts on the ground. I, I just want to say Turkey's president said it is like throwing the region into a ring of fire. Jordan's king said it will provoke Muslims and Christians alike. Saudis expressed concern. Even our European allies sounded a chorus of alarm with French President Macron calling it regrettable and others saying it will send us backward to even darker times than the ones we are already living in. So what would you say to them? You say you don't like the way President Trump did this. What do you do to fix it? Well, Martha, we've seen this in so many places in the world uh, where, the, where, the, where Mr. Trump has no appreciation for diplomacy. We see that in the budget he submitted with the State Department's budget. We see that on personnel decisions that are being made. I think the president is damaging America's national security and our standing in the world for his inability to use diplomacy in the right way. So there was a right way of doing this, and uh, the president has, to, to date has not shown his uh, understanding of the importance of diplomacy. And, and I want to move back home here to Capitol Hill, to your colleague, Senator Franken, who resigned this week, said he was stepping down after more than 30 Democratic senators called for his resignation. You were not one of them. Why not? Well, I, I let Senator Franken make his own decision. I think he did what he thought was best for the people of Minnesota. It was clear, uh, as he pointed out on the Senate floor, that he could not uh, defend himself and represent the people of Minnesota in the manner in which they were entitled. So he made his own decision. I think it was the right decision. Uh, moving forward, it's very clear that this type of behavior is just not appropriate. We now have a chance. I hope the people of Alabama will speak with a very clear voice that a person like Mr. Moore has no place in the United States Senate. Uh, the Republicans were speaking that language before the last couple of weeks, where now it looks like they're more concerned about having a vote in the Senate rather than who occupies that, that seat. So I hope the American people understand that this type of behavior will not be allowed. And, and, and just quickly, if Roy Moore wins, do you think there should be an ethics investigation? Do you trust that process in Congress? Well, you know, clearly the ethics uh, committee is the place in which we make our decisions as to qualifications for people staying in the Senate and for any penalties that may be imposed. I hope we don't have to reach that point because I hope the people of Alabama on Tuesday will do the right thing and reject for Mr. Moore for what he stands for. Uh, there's also a new Quinnipiac University poll out this week that found 70 percent of Americans say Congress should investigate sexual harassment accusations against President Trump. Do you agree with that? Well, there's a limit as to what the Congress can do in investigating a president's conduct. Most of it falls under the impeachment clause, but there is clearly uh, major concerns that have been expressed by many of us as to the behavior of President Trump, and, and including uh, the episodes involving uh, the tapes that we've heard uh, during the campaign. So there's clearly concerns that we have. 
Uh, the American people, of course, heard that and then elected him president of the United States. I think the important thing moving forward is to make sure that President Trump, uh, that we have accountability for actions in office. Thanks very much for joining us this morning, Senator. Thank you.